right, welcome back to Flight Sim 2020. Welcome to Albany, West Australia. The A2A Comanche, which is looking nice and dirty. And uh, possibly, actually not possibly, definitely the most ambitious thing I've ever taken on, on this channel. Um, I recently picked up the A2A Comanche, which is just unrivaled in its um, level or depth of simulation. And I thought that this would be the perfect kind of plane to do something I've always wanted to do. And it's not quite an around the world trip, but we are here in Western Australia. I've bought this aircraft on FS Economy. It was the cheapest Comanche that I could find. And uh, I want to fly it all the way to <laughs> Pretoria, South Africa. Now, of course, we cannot fly this over the ocean, so we're going to have to go all the way around um, Australia, across to Singapore, India, all of that, all the way around through uh, Northern Africa and down into South Africa. This is going to take a long time. I'm going to try and do kind of one flight a week. Maybe we'll see how that goes, but I'm expecting this to take, you know, the best part of this year. 2024 because I'm going to kind of do this in small chunks. I don't want to just sit it on autopilot for three hours and, and leave it or, or six hours or whatever. I want to do it in smaller chunks. So our first flight today is going to be probably an hour and a half ish, maybe a little bit longer. And uh, I guess the idea is to kind of just see how each flight goes. And when we feel like it, we'll find somewhere to land. Some of the more complex places, I will do some more specific flight plans and very specific procedures and things like that. We're going to be doing some IFR, we're going to be doing some VFR. Um, but I think the best place to start is to just kind of start. And, and this is also going to uh, help me learn the aircraft as we go, because of course, this aircraft keeps um, its persistence. So any damage that we occur along uh, that we incur along the way, will go with us. We're going to put hours on the airframe. We are going to run the risk of failures and things as we progress. Um, so this is not a brand new aircraft. As you can see, it's been here in the outback for a while. And uh, when we jump into the cockpit, I will show you the stats on the engine and the airframe. But that is the plan. So today we're starting off here in Albany. This is um, it's not a kind of random choice. This is where the aircraft was in FS Economy. And uh, that is our registration, Victor Hotel, Tango Mike Whiskey. Okay, so my plan is from here in Albany, we're gonna go west along the coast. Possibly at the end of this flight, we're gonna stop in Bustleton. Um, and then we're gonna head north along the coast. And then I'll see, I'll have to do some checks to see if we can actually make it there into East Timor and all of those islands, or if we have to continue all the way around um, and hop into Papua New Guinea and fly along there. Um, I think we should be able to make it across to East Timor, but maybe we'll do the whole Papua New Guinea thing as well, because that'll be a lot of fun, um, a lot of fun to fly through in any case. So. That's still a long way away before we decide if we're going to Papua New Guinea. So today we're going to make our way towards Bustleton and then our next flight will take us along the coast past Perth and we'll find somewhere along the way with a hotel to stop. Um, this is Australia, so there isn't much in between these two uh, towns that we're flying to. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this leg VFR. However, if I look around, there are some clouds out there, so we might actually need to do IFR at some point. Um, I figured if we do need to, we could possibly stop off somewhere and do an IFR flight plan, or maybe go into a hold at some point, or just during the cruise, switch over to IFR. Of course, I'm not doing this with any real ATC yet. Um, that might happen in the future, but for now, we're just getting into learning the Comanche and uh, making our way along the uh, west coast of, well, the southwest coast of Australia. And let's see if we can get into Bustleton. Um, the other thing is, I want to do this all real time in real weather. So in South Africa, it is 
quarter past 11 at night, which is early morning here in Australia. So that's going to be uh, kind of interesting. We, we might have to kind of forego that, that idea at some point. But uh, yeah, so this is going to be a nice late night for me, early morning in the sim. Anyway, let me stop talking and uh, let's kind of get started, I guess. So we'll jump aboard the aircraft and I will show you our beautiful Comanche that I have purchased. Right, so if we go here to maintenance. So I've checked everything. There were a couple of small issues which I fixed, like replacing some filters and uh, cleaning the spark plugs and stuff like that. So we've got 4,689 hours on the airframe and 587 hours on the engine. We have the Macaulay Constant Speed Aluminium Propeller that is the white one, if I remember correctly. No, it's sorry, it's not the white one, it's the black one. I can literally see it right there. I don't know why I see it. Um, I've fitted out all of these things. Maybe they'll make it better for us flying so far around the world. I don't know. The other thing is, I couldn't actually decide if I wanted to do this with just the standard, well, with no GPS and just like do this old school and basic. And then I thought, at some point, that's just gonna become really tough. If we're doing this bigger flight, most of the time I'm probably not gonna use the GPS navigation. Sometimes I will, it depends how I feel. So I'm gonna have the full on um, GTN for us in case we decide, uh, in case I decide that I want to use that at some point. Right. If we look here, it's nice and windy today. It is kind of cool as well, 17 degrees. So um, we'll get um, heat on in the cockpit uh, once we are up and running. But all that's left to do next is to get cracking. So let's do our pre-flight. Right, so I want to bring the flaps down. That all looks good. Now, obviously we have just had a mechanic inspect this, so we're expecting everything to be fine. Now that's not gonna work because I need to take these off. Okay, nice and free. No squeaks or weird clicks or anything as we do that. Right, I've also filled this up as much as we can. So we've got 90 gallons of fuel. Hopefully with no water in it. Okay, well, we had 90 gallons of fuel. That looks good to me. Okay, lights will come back just now and check once we've got the battery on. Let's get our tie downs. It is nice and windy and we've got a nice uh, dirty aircraft, which I think is kind of cool. It gives it a bit of character. We're going to take this around the world. I don't want it to be pristine. This is a, a working aircraft. Well, not so much. It's a touring aircraft. Okay, that looks good. We are nice and full there of fuel. The other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna have a, a mechanic to inspect everywhere. So eventually these checks are gonna become very, very important because it's the only way we're gonna be able to tell um, how our aircraft is actually doing. Now, I don't know how you actually get water in the fuel of the Cherokee. I have seen it in some videos where people have had water, but I've never actually had that issue. It could just be the places where I'm flying. Uh, no obstructions, everything looks good. So, I don't know, let's check out the oil. I didn't replace the oil, so that's horrible. Um, I think we should change that. Now, I also don't actually know the difference between the different oil grades and which one we should be using. So if we top this up, let's drain it out and then top it up with some new oil. We'll put 10 quarts in there, that's better. So when it's clear like that, that means the oil is better. Again, we're probably not gonna be able to do this everywhere that we go. So we'll try and keep it as realistic as possible. Here where we're starting out, we've got all the stuff that we need. Okay, make sure that there is actually full fuel in here, which there is. It should be all the way up just below that little um, kind of like air vent thing over there.
Alright, let's just chucks. Yeah, we can take this off and we can release the tie down. We'll come back to checking all the lights. Make sure that we have full fuel in here. Cool, this weird texture thing happens sometimes, but I think it's because of the add-on liveries that I've got. The, the dirty liveries. I've never seen that in any of the standard liveries. Okay, I don't see any water in there either. That looks good. Right. That's all good as well. Cool. No weird sounds, no weird sticking. That's clear. Make sure we get rid of that tie down and make sure that this moves smoothly as well. It does seem to be a little bit of a stick there in the middle. Let's see, just there. It doesn't move smoothly. Could also just be the way that I'm moving the mouse. Because when we had the mechanic check out the airframe, nothing was wrong with the rudder or the elevator. So I think we are fine. Yeah, and that's clear as well. Right, it's just me going along on this ride. Maybe we'll pick up some friends along the way. We're going to take tools, and then I'm going to take my big bag along of clothes and stuff. Maybe I should actually take two sets of stuff. So we've got full baggage, but uh, just one person, so we should be fine in terms of weight. Okay, that is our pre-flight done. We don't have any passengers. Seatbelts, our seatbelts are secure. Let's go ahead and close the door. It is nice and cool this morning, so no worries about getting hot in here. Um, okay, parking brake. Get rid of the yoke for now. Okay, so we'll do that and set the parking brake like so. Perfect. Uh, gear switch down, which it is. Flaps are up. Radios, everything is off. Cool. Uh, autopilot master off and avionics off as well. All electrical switches are off. Circuit breakers. Uh, so we just want to check that all of these, there's no white bands like that. That looks good to me. And then we want the rotating beacon, the orange one, to be on. Right, now we're going to start up the engine and begin our massively long journey. Okay, fuel selection, uh, they're both on at the moment. Let's go with the left tank, because why not? Um, and then we will do mixture, rich, prop, full forward, carb heat is off. Uh, master switch on, fuel pump. Check that we actually get some pressure. Cool. Then we need to prime. I think three should be enough. We're not super cold or anything today. I don't know when last this plane was flown. Let's do four. We'll go ahead and lock that. Okay, We're mags locked. to both. Prop area is clear. Right, let's start her up. Crack the throttle just a little bit. Yeah, that does not sound good. Let's give it a little bit more prime. for about a thousand and we'll go ahead and lean this out so we don't foul the plugs like about so okay everything is in the green obviously the temperatures 
still need a bit of time to come up, so oil temp and cylinder head. Um, the one thing that I do find annoying, I wish they would have like the little, this temperature thing just up here so it's always there because obviously in reality, uh, you could just feel if it's too hot or too cold. But here, I have to keep going back to this page. I want to have the checklist open and have the temperature indicator there so I can tell uh, if we need heat or cool or whatever. All right, I'm just going to use the cheat code to set our Q&H because it saves a little bit of time. Uh, oil pressure is checked, okay, mixture is lean. So next is our taxi. So prime is locked, avionics master, we can now turn on. Check our ammeter. Doesn't actually seem to be doing anything. Maybe our battery's already charged. I should have actually checked that earlier. And we refueled with 90, so we can save that. Okay, our transponder is fine for now. Ultimate is set. Heading indicator will set once we get on the runway. Landing gear, green, uh, nav lights. We turn the nav lights on. This knob actually, which is kind of interesting. But I like to have these aged uh, or the instrument lights on as well. Right, parking brake release, and we can test the brakes. Cool, brakes are working fine. Right, next we'll do our runner. Uh, but first, so the wind, I saw the wind sock out here just now. So we want to go to our right. Okay, so we're going to taxi there. And I guess we just backtrack. Yeah, onto there and backtrack. Cool. And we are off. Well, <laughs> we still have to do the run up to check that everything is functioning okay. I'm sure it should be. Since we have just been checked out by the mechanic. temperature is slowly coming up same with the cylinder head obviously we're not running very high revs or anything yet so the run-up should help a bit with uh, warming things up does it look like we can go VFR <laughs> not really we're gonna have to go IFR on our very very first leg Yeah, the other thing I probably should have done already is turn on the radios. I don't know if we're going to be able to do this VFR looking at that. I mean, I'm quite happy to do IFR. It's just that, yeah, we kind of wanted to follow the coast. Let's get the landing lights and strobes on since we're entering the runway.
Okay, this is completely out of sync, which I was expecting. So there's 12, there's one big one after 12, little one. So I'm just actually going to line that up perfectly. And we are. Now the reason why I'm saying big one and I'm not doing numbers is because these things turn in opposite directions. So you'll see 12 is on the left here, but 15 is on the left there. So it makes it easier to just do it like this. For me at least, I understand what I'm doing. So we want to be there. Cool, that's synced up. Let's get back to the middle. Uh, why does this say that we have a headwind? I was going to turn around and take off from the other direction. Then we should be taking off from here. That's interesting. Is that windsock wrong? Okay, I was going to do the run up on the little holding area at the end. I'm going to have to do our run up here quickly on the runway, which is not ideal. Okay, we're positioned into the wind, brakes on, fuel quantity, good, side tank is selected, mixture. Let's go back to rich, go up to 2000 RPM. Like so. Okay. Everything looks good. We're all in the green. Let's do our mag check. So we don't want any more than 125. Let's just go back. I wasn't quite at 2000. Okay, so basically we want to be above 1875. I mean, it is only just. Okay, difference of less than 50. Cool. I'm happy with that. Cycle the prop. Yeah, reduced to eighteen hundred. that everything is stable. Everything's still in the green. All looks good. Okay, we'll check our carb heat. Here okay, we get the drop and we have temperature change. Okay, before takeoff controls. Free and correct. Elevated trim is neutral doors latched flaps we don't need for this takeoff fuel selection desired tank fuel pump can come on mixture full rich prop full forward carb heat is off engine gauge is all in the green pito heat we probably don't need right now we'll keep an eye on our temperature adding lights and strobes are on okay so we'll go full throttle what I should do as well is just unclick that, otherwise every time I want to come and set the heading bug, uh, I screw up my coordination. Okay, positive rate, so we're going to rotate at 85 mph and climb out at about 105. Right, then we'll come back to this just now. 
Okay, let's release the brakes. Why do we have a volts warning? That's concerning. Let's go gear up. And we'll climb out at about 105. I need to figure out what's going on with our battery. Okay, let's bring the power back to about 24. Fuel pump can come off. That was causing the discharge issue, it would appear. VFR might actually be possible after all. Okay, we're going west, so we want even number. So I reckon we'll go up to 2,000 feet now. Let's do 4,000 feet initially for our little cruise along the coast. Go ahead here and depart on the downwind. Okay, I'm going to bring the prop back to 2400. Oh, wow, actually, a little bit of cloud that we're going through here. definitely not going to be able to do this VFR. I don't know if you can do VFR on top in Australia. going to turn out to the east, uh, sorry, to the west, and we're going to have a look at a bit of an IFR flight plan. 
from here. Again, to clarify, in reality, I probably wouldn't make up an RFR flight uh, while I'm in the air. But hey, that's what the simulator is for. Okay, since we're going RFR, I'm going to go up to 6,000. Get above these clouds. basically going to have to go direct to airports here. There's no VORs, there's nothing to work with. Okay, I'm going to get the autopilot master on because we're going to use that um, to hold the aircraft steady while I sort out a flight plan. At least it's nice and smooth because we're early morning. Okay, coming up to 6,000. to altitude hold and we'll do roll on the uh, wow that did not work at all Okay, let's see if we can get it steady here. Okay, if we engage this now, right, that's better. We're heading exactly west now. I think the only option that we have there's no VORs, there's no RNF points, there's pretty much nothing out here. We're gonna go direct to Manjuma and then direct to Busselton.
Okay, so Bustleton is YBLN. And Manjumup is YMJM. Okay, and that's going to be our route. our trim beeping. Let's stop now and see which way it wants us to trim. So we'll, obviously we'll keep an eye on that all the time. Okay, 301 on the course. down. Okay, we'll just keep an eye on that for now. 4.3 miles off our course and we're estimating Manjimup in 43 minutes and now it's starting to get bumpy. Of course we can climb higher if we need to. Okay, I'm going to turn off the landing lights. Okay, so this is saying we've got about four and a half hours of fuel remaining, which is pretty decent. expect us to go IFR so soon but hey it is what it is okay just keeping an eye on that deviation okay let's see how our temperature is so it's actually quite warm in here now okay throttle set proper set mixture uh, we haven't actually leaned, that's bad. Okay, fuel pressure, oil pressure and temperatures are good. Let's put that away for now. What I want to find is we must have a clock. Okay, so there's no way for me to do timers on here or anything. Which is fine, I will do that on my iPad then. Because what I'm gonna do is get this tank down to that dot then we're going to burn that one off and then we're going to do uh, the tip tanks so I'll do 50 minutes on that one 30 minutes on that one 30 minutes on that one 30 minutes on that one until they're both done ok 
Okay, we're coming up to our GPS course now. But it is a beautiful morning here over Western Australia. And we are just chilling above the clouds. It's actually not too bumpy anymore, which is great. Because that could have been horrible. Okay, I'm going to switch tanks. get that to kind of the same place and then burn off our tip tanks as much as we can. So the IFR flying might actually be pretty boring because we're just going to be on the autopilot following that GPS course. Whereas with VFR, it's going to go along the coast and do a bit of sightseeing. I don't know how much there is to see out where we are now, but definitely along this trip, we're going to be doing quite a lot of sightseeing. to get us on track here. Get it trimmed out nicely. We're going to have to realign my gauges here.
let's give the autopilot another try now that we're a little bit more stable yes we're just after 30 yeah so we definitely need to realign this oh wrong side It's pretty close, I think. Okay, we calculated with... Uh, Eighty-three point three gallons remaining. Keep an eye on those fuel gauges and I'll switch over to the tip tanks once we've brought that right fuel tank down a bit, just so we try and keep the aircraft balanced. Beautiful smooth day to fly. What a pleasure. Okay, about 35 minutes to that first airport, Manjimup. Right, the other thing I wanted to mention is that most likely on these flights I'm not going to talk the whole way through. I think there will be parts where I'm going to go quiet for a bit because otherwise it's just going to be a bit much trying to talk for like two, three hours straight on each flight and there's going to be, you know, 50, 60, maybe even 100 different legs on this depending on how long we want to go. up trim manifold pressure is super low which probably means we have some carb icing yeah look at that
Okay, so one thing I don't quite understand is how you use this system. So if I've got it set to Richard P. Yeah, it's already running rough. So I'm not sure how to actually use this system. I've been kind of doing the lean by ear thing where you go until like it starts running rough. So if I pull this back, you'll see this starts really bouncing around. And then we just put it put back in a little bit more to compensate. Just over 25 minutes to go into our first waypoint.
Right, so the other thing I am going to do is, at Busselton, there is one of these guys. Oh, that's kind of cool. That is very useful, actually. Okay, so we've been airborne for 38 minutes. Uh, but what I actually wanted to do is, its frequency, the ADF at Busselton is 386. I really prefer the method where you click on the top and it lets you change this number and you click on it again and lets you change that number. This whole acceleration thing is a bit tough. Okay, so this will be this needle here. Obviously, we're not going to be picking up that, that up for quite a while still. So every 15 minutes we want to check our alignment. Okay, so I've just realized this is actually showing us our time to destination, not to the next waypoint. I must have changed that at some point and not remember doing that. So it's actually only 16 minutes because we're flying over this airport now. So about 16 minutes to get to our final uh, airport that we're landing at.
Okay, if we can't get into that airport, so Bustleton, we can go southwest to Margaret River. We can go northeast to Bunbury. Or we could probably make it all the way to Perth with the fuel that we have. So we've got a couple of options.
Right, so we're actually coming up to our destination. So I'm going to just flip this into roll mode. And then we're going to dial in. Oh, I'm checking the weather. So we're 1022 at the airport. And the wind, uh, 160, so we're going to take runway 12. Like so. Almost been airborne for an hour. We didn't actually use the tip tanks at all. Airport is fifty six feet, so we'll do one thousand feet for pattern altitude. Totally read the runway wrong. It's two one zero, not one two zero, which makes a lot more sense. seven miles out from. So we'll enter the left hand downwind for runway two one. We're a little high and a little fast, so we're gonna have to extend our downwind a little bit. 
actually quite a long runway here. Okay, let's join the downwind here. Uh, obviously, at this point, we would have switched to VFR. bit bumpy on the coast here. Yeah? Okay, let's get landing lights on and we'll actually bring the gear down now. about the battery. It seems like it's not charging maybe. Okay, let's get the first notch of flaps in. Okay, gear down, flaps are full. Next gen props full forward. A little burst on the carb heat. Brakes a little bit sticky. Right, that approach was actually a little bit tough with the wind. Okay, strobes and landing lights off. Get the flaps up. Let's lean for the ground. And then we'll just find a parking. Uh, what I do need to do is bring this back to neutral. So, 
course there will be some sort of random vehicle that wants to drive into me. See how the battery thing is a bit strange. It does seem that it's not charging. I'm not entirely sure what we can do about that other than getting a mechanic to fix it. So if you come down here, not there, here, you can see we're sitting at only 12 volts. I think that's showing volts. We should be like double that. It's only our first leg, but I think we might actually have to get a mechanic to check out this battery because that is a bit concerning. I love how you can actually like hear the engine and everything cooling down like that. Super cool. Right, I'm a bit worried about the battery, so maybe before the next flight, later this afternoon, we might actually need to have that looked at. But next up, we're gonna go north along the coast that way um, and probably cross Perth and then there's a little airport up that way called, uh, I think it's Geraldton or something like that, which is probably where we're going to aim for, but we'll see how long of a flight we want to do. We've still got all the fuel in the tip tanks, so we can actually go quite far. Perhaps if we wanted to do a bit of a longer flight, we can cruise all the way up along the coast, get to the top. But for now, uh, that is going to bring us to the end of our flight. So what I do need to do is let's put the control lock in. All right, cool. And we might as well close here. Okay, so that is going to bring us to the end of our very first flight where we're going to try and get this Comanche all the way uh, from Australia to Pretoria, South Africa. One thing I forgot to mention is that because we do have failures and stuff, it is possible that we could, I suppose, die along the way. Um, if we had like an engine failure or something and we crash, I guess that brings us to the end of our series. But we didn't do that today. It wasn't the best landing ever. It was actually way windier than I expected. Um, yeah, I mean, this only says 12 knots. Yeah, I guess it could have been about 12 knots, a little bit gusty. But anyway, we made it safely to our very first uh, destination. And uh, if you enjoyed this one, if you made it all the way to this point, if you want to follow along with the series, you know what to do down below, and I'll see you in the next one.